What are the most common occupations in this list? What are the most common letters in the string scrum diddlyumptious? These type of questions come up frequently in data analytics applications, but how can we have a computer efficiently calculate the answer? One trick is to break the problem into two smaller steps, counting how often each item appears, and then finding the largest count and the associated items. A dictionary is very helpful in the first step, and a list allows us to handle ties in the second step. Let's visualize the Python code to find the most common letter in some text following those two steps. As we visualize this code, the variables will be seen to the right of the code, and the input output will be in the console beneath the code. The input function shows a prompt to the user and waits for them to type in some text and hit enter. Suppose they type in pepperoni pizza. This single equal sign tells Python to create a variable called pros and save what the user typed to that variable. To collect all the characters and their associated count, we need to create an empty dictionary, as indicated by these curly braces, and save the dictionary to a variable called char underscore count. The dictionary starts empty, but we will have Python add keys and values very soon. This first for each loop on line three repeats all the indented code after it down to line seven. The loop will create this variable called letter, and letter will step through every character in the prose variable, starting with the first character, a lowercase p. This conditional is the first code in the loop to run. The blue indented code on line five belongs to the if, and the red indented code on line seven belongs to the else. To evaluate the condition, Python skips the not for now and looks at the rest of the expression. The in operator asks Python if the letter variable on the left exists as a key in the char count dictionary on the right. The dictionary is still empty, so it has no keys, and Python evaluates the expression to be false. Now Python looks at the not operator and inverts the false expression to be true. Because the condition of the if statement is true, Python runs line five. This tells Python to store a key value pair in the dictionary, where the key comes from the letter variable, a lowercase p, and the value is the right side of the equal sign, a one. In other words, the dictionary now has the information that we have seen the letter p one time. There is no more code in the if clause, and because the if statement was true, we skip the else clause. There is no more code in the for loop, so Python goes back to the top of the loop and steps the letter variable to the next character in prose, the lowercase e. In the loop, we evaluate the condition of the if statement. Python asks if the letter e is a key in the dictionary. It is not, so the in operator evaluates to false. The not operator inverts false to make the condition true. Because the if statement is true, we run the code on line five, which stores the value one with the key e from the letter variable. After completing the if statement, we again skip the else statement, which takes us to the end of the loop, then back to the top. The letter variable steps to the next character in prose, a lowercase p again, and the loop runs again. This time, the in operator returns true because the letter p is a key in the char count dictionary. The not operator inverts true, resulting in a condition that is false. The false condition means we skip the code in the if statement and go down to the else statement and run the code on line seven. There's a surprising amount of action here on line seven. First, the square bracket notation tells Python to retrieve the value from the dictionary associated with the key from the letter variable. This means Python finds the value one that was associated with the letter P key. Then the plus operator tells Python to add one to that value, resulting in the number two. Finally, because line seven uses the plus equals operator, Python stores the two back into the dictionary as the value associated with the letter P. In short, Python added one to the existing value associated with the key from the letter variable. The char count dictionary now has the information that we have seen the letter E one time and the letter P two times. The whole process continues. The for each loop goes through each character in the pros variable and either adds one to the existing count if we have seen the character before, or adds a new entry to the dictionary the first time we see a given character. If you want to skip forwards or backwards through the video, make use of the video chapters below. The for loop has reached the end of the prose variable. 
With no more characters in it, the loop stops repeating. Lines 2 through 7 have efficiently counted all the characters in prose, and the results are in the char count dictionary. A neat feat for only six lines of code. Now, we need to have Python find the largest count value and one or more characters with that count. We will keep track of those characters in the most underscore common list, which we initialize with empty square brackets. We need another variable to keep track of the largest count value we have seen so far. We initialize largest to zero because we have not looked at any counts yet. To go through all characters that we have counted, we use a second for each loop here on line 10. This loop happens to have the same loop variable name as before. The loop variable letter will step through all keys in the char count dictionary, in whatever order the dictionary happened to store them. In this example, the first key used in the iteration is the letter A. Even though Python steps through the keys in the dictionary, we also need the values, that is the counts, in order to find the largest. We can retrieve the value from the dictionary using this square bracket notation on line 7, and then store it to a temporary variable called count using the assignment operation. The conditional in the second loop has an LIF clause, short for else if, which will be used to handle ties in a moment. The indented blue code belongs to the if clause, and the indented purple code belongs to the elif clause. Now, Python evaluates the if condition, asking if the count variable is greater than the largest variable. 1 is greater than 0, so the condition evaluates to true, which means Python runs the indented blue code on line 13. Line 13 takes the value from the right side of the equal sign, the 1 from the count variable, and assigns it to the variable on the left, the largest variable. Line 13 effectively remembers the largest count Python has seen so far, and now we need to likewise remember which character had that count, which is what line 14 does. The square brackets surrounding the letter variable on line 14 behave differently than similar syntax on lines 5, 7, and 11. Do you see why? Notice the code on lines 5, 7, and 11 all have a variable name before the square brackets. That told Python to treat the square brackets as the get item or set item operation. The square brackets on line 14 do not have a variable before them, so Python interprets the command as a list creation operation. That is, it creates a list with one item in it, the contents of the letter variable, and updates the most common variable to hold that list. Because the if condition was true, we skip the elif. This reaches the end of the loop, so the letter variable steps to the next key in the char count, and the loop repeats. This time, the loop finds a letter e as a count of two, which is greater than the largest count so far, so it updates the largest variable and creates a new list for the most common variable. Again, we skip the elif branch because the if statement was found to be true. The third time through the loop, Python evaluates that 2 is not greater than 2, so Python skips the if block and goes to the elif on line 15 to evaluate that condition. The elif condition is true, indicating we have a tie for the most common letter. Instead of creating a new list, we have Python append the current contents of the letter variable to the most common list. As of now, e and i are tied for being the most common letters. The next few keys from the dictionary that the loop steps through do not have a value greater than or equal to the largest count seen so far. This means both the if condition and the elif condition are false, causing Python to do nothing and just go on to the next key in the dictionary. When the loop gets to the character p, it finds the value 4 is bigger than the largest count seen so far, and updates the largest variable, and creates a new list to completely replace the contents of the most common variable. We the humans can see no remaining value in the dictionary is greater than 4, but Python can't do that. Python needs to check all keys and look at all values so that it is guaranteed to find the largest value and the keys associated with that largest value no matter how the data is arranged in the dictionary. Eventually, the loop has no more keys to check in the char count dictionary, so the loop finishes, and Python goes to the last line of code, 
which prints out a string literal and the list formatted with square brackets. Python has found the most common letter in pepperoni pizza to be the letter P. To recap, we broke down the problem into two steps, counting the characters using a dictionary and finding the largest count and associated characters. The cool thing about using a dictionary like this is that if you needed to solve a similar problem, like finding the most common occupation from a list, the code is basically the same, except for making the variable names more relevant. Because these two steps are easily reusable, we sometimes call them coding patterns. Adding patterns like these to your programming toolkit makes planning and writing your code a lot easier. Happy learning!